I, I was just telling you that because, like I said, I lost my license. I've just been having a lot of problems lately. Problems? I don't want to hear about your Gun. damn problems. Everybody got problems. My mama got problems. She just lost her leg. My cousin Pookie just lost a testicle. My dog just threw up somebody's finger. That's a problem. I really regret opening my mouth and talking to you. Welcome back to the show that's hitting harder than the Dom's double axe handle. That's right. God damn it, MAHQ. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Miss Matilda. It's okay. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all right. Audience, but, um, we're we're back. Miss Matilda. Uh, Miss Matilda, I, uh, may you rest in peace. We're um peace we're bringing is. you a new segment, and we're talking about um it's another anime spotlight, and we're going to be speaking on the OVA series Mega Zone Two Three. Or in some circles, make his own 23. <laughs> Watching the dub, I was ultra confused. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I um, I just, just finished watching it not too long ago. Well, at least parts one and two. I have not seen part three yet, but I have it in my custody as well. And I, I have to say, I enjoyed it. It was kind of a throwback to the um, the good old um, the good old ultra violent 80s, as I've I've so treasured in these past few years. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Um, we're gonna we're gonna discuss it. We're gonna go into it a little bit and um, just give our thoughts on it. And basically, the overview is, and I hate to ruin the hook for you guys, but um, it starts out in your you know it's a typical '80s situation. You got the uh, you got the the free spirited main character dude that's um a motorcyclist r- running from the cops. His name is Shogo, and um, he's pretty much he does what he wants. He's kind of a, a Pete out. I guess you could call him kind of Peter Panish, you know, kind of guy who's in between. <laughs> he's in his adolescence. He doesn't want to grow up, but at the same time. Um, Is this a theme? He, he, wait, last week we had the, the Arkham yeah. Legend. Now it's Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's kind of... <laughs> Thank you. I, I was trying to hold back, but thank you for Well, doing. no, but I'm just saying. So next week is, is it things when we discuss uh, <laughs> Dunbuy, and I don't know. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I'd be glad to I'd be glad to compare those two. But no, he's just, he's an anarchist. You know, he doesn't want to conform to the way society is. And, you know, he's always causing trouble and on the, on the run from the cops. And, then, you know, in his, in his latest, uh, his latest uh, dodging of the cops, he runs into a, a young girl by the name of um, Yui, correct? I believe yeah. it's yeah, you yeah. Ian. Yes, she um she's just happening to be late for uh, I think a, a dance performance or rehearsal, and he gives her a ride to um her dance studio and yeah she works at the Hard Rock Cafe or something like that, which is ironic because a lot of places in this anime that they, they don't change the name of them, they actually just you know they roll with it. The McDonald's, Hard Rock Cafe, Coca Cola, all those brands are in there. Lucky Strike cigarettes. I was amazed. And I had an urge to smoke. It's called ad- in- in-show <laughs> advertising. Yeah, it was the start of in-show advertising. Exactly. I think Macross had it covered before that with uh, Budweiser Missile. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. Oh, my God, that's I right. That. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so he gets with the girl then. He, and gets, with, he gets with the girl and um, he takes her to, um, to her, her appointment and somehow finagles the digits. <laughs> he um, gets her to, to give up the digits and... Um, he goes on to meet up with one of his um homeboys who's involved with the top secret project and he doesn't know anything about the top secret project yet but when he gets to this um underground garage his friend shows up shows off this uh brand new motorbike to him called the Garland and it's bigger than your average bike and looks just all cool as all get out but um they uh the authorities show up some some kind of secretive men and men in black type dudes they're not in black but they wear sunglasses and whatnot and they they've come to reacquire the garland and kill the um, young man who stole it and uh was it the shogo makes a getaway on the garland with his friend following him but um his friend isn't too um, fortunate and ends up dying as a result shogo um makes it out and the conspiracy follows and um chris you'd probably be able to explain this better than i would but <laughs> well he's got this this awesome bike which he soon figures out is uh you know much more than it seems and uh you got this idol singer, Eve Tokimatsuri, who, you know, is sort of like a Lin Min May and kind of looks like her, being designed by Mikimoto. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, through a couple of the course of a couple of events, he finds out that um, Eve isn't even real. She, she's a virtual idol. And um, as he explores more and he's being chased by the military, he discovers that the world isn't real and that um, it's not the 1980s in Tokyo and that they're actually on 
a spaceship. Yep. Right. And this spaceship was one of many that left Earth because uh, there was this apocalyptic war and um, the survivors left on these ships. So this computer, uh, Bahamut, that uh, is running Megazone 2, 3, or 23, um, wants to keep people, you know, pacified and it fools them by recreating 20th century Earth. So everybody thinks that they're living on Earth, and even like when they when they think they're going on vacation, like they're really just being hypnotized into thinking they went somewhere. But it's really just this one city. Right. And yeah. um, you know, he decides to bust it open. This conspiracy. While in the meantime, uh, you know, getting it on with Yui because you know he's a he's a, he's an outlaw, and you know, comes down to a final showdown with uh, BD. And unfortunately, the Garland gets its ass kicked, which was quite a departure for, uh, you know, for this project. And I think that's uh, one of the things that makes it stand out is that at the end, the hero, the inexperienced pilot, loses. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing that stands out is, you know, the characters, they're, they're pretty different from, uh, you know, what you normally see in a mecha show. You got um, Shogo, who's the sort of, like, rebellious type, but not really like a whiny angsty guy then you got the male in question yui who comes off so sweet and everything but you know isn't above having sex with some sleazy producer to get a job yeah oh that was that was very which results in a great scene of you know this creepy producer trying to sex her up and then shogo you know is peeping on them with the the garland and he just freaking <laughs> busts through the wall of the hotel and grabs her yeah exactly when she said when she said she worked in Rapongi. That was like a clue to me that she might actually, you know, do that kind of thing. I, I wasn't sure, but then you know, all of a sudden, you know, she's going to sleep with the record producer in order to, to, to advance her career. It's like, wow, does she do this on the regular? Or, you know, is, she, is this just like one thing she's just doing to ad- advance herself? I, I don't know. Maybe that was part of her, um, part of the way she made money. Who knew? But um, yeah, it just it it just it clued me into the to the fact that that might happen. But I was really shocked to still see it happen. Yeah, and in essence, sort of like. Uh the basic story it's pretty much the matrix yeah yeah you know that the world you think you live in is totally fake right exactly and there's a conspiracy behind it isn't it isn't this um anime also part of the inspiration for the matrix as in um then the wachowski brothers actually um watch this and you know just just maybe they it, who knows I know it's it's well known that they are anime fans. I mean, you can see obvious anime inspirations in yeah. the, the Matrix, and you know the Matrix, the original Megazone, and also the horrible edited Robotech, the movie. Those would have both been around long before yep. the Matrix here in America, and, and they probably would have seen it because it was released uh, by Streamline as uncut Megazone twenty three exactly. in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they would have definitely seen it. So they might have been inspired by it. Who knows? That's but, true. It's uh, it's definitely a good show. I mean, the first parts, um, you know, it's it's one of those shows I think that everybody that is um, a mech fan needs to see, um, you know, and, and all the parallels, like you said, with the with the the Matrix and just the flawed characters. That's the thing that was so great about it is. Um, just every character's flawed, and like you said, they and and the, and the avenues that they went with some of the characters, like one girl, um, the one that was filming the movie with them, I forget her name, but um, uh, Tomomi, Tomomi, yeah, the yeah, Tomomi, yeah. is she, it, to, yeah, she, um, she ends up getting executed like towards the end, and yeah, brutally murdered too, brutally on top of that, murdered. Yeah. Like, I kind of saw like, that coming. It's like, oh, but, but this poor girl, it's like, oh man, uh, yeah, it's like they really done her a, wrong. Yeah, and, and, and that was nothing compared to the ultra violence in the second part. But <laughs> still, to see oh, a, such a cute character just get wasted like that, it was amazing. I just, I there was there was a lot of things that shocked me in it. Even if, after all these years of watching anime, I was I was I was quite taken aback with some of the visuals in this. And I I I'm glad that when I'm watching a show that when that happens, you know, it, it's it still shows that anime can still be fresh to me, no matter how old it is, or you know, how 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 downtrodden I might think of a show is until they actually surprise me so i just i i, I like megas on 23 a lot including um the second part but i like the first part more than the second i have to be honest a couple of uh closing notes on on part one um originally the the show was intended to be a 26 episode tv series mm-hmm. and the whole motorcycle thing was kind of in the style of of most peta but yeah. then the sponsors pulled out so uh what they ended up doing is you know reformatting the story into this you know, OAV thing, which was very new at the time. I mean, there'd only been a few OAV series in 1985, and Megazone was one of the, is considered like one of the very first profitable 
OAVs, and I think that probably helped the story because, I mean, you know, yeah, there's the violence and the sex and all that, but the the themes that are in this show, you couldn't have done any of that stuff on TV. No, couldn't not have at all. all. Especially the so sex. So I think, um, you know, having it in an OAV form, which was this totally new uncharted territory, really allowed them to go new places and define the standard of, you know, the 80s OAV. I mean, you look at any 80s OAV, whether it's something like Riding Bean or Bubblegum Bubble Crisis mm-hmm. or any of these things, whether they're Mecha or not, I mean, Megazone 23 really set the tone for that golden age of 80s OAVs. Thank goodness for it. And the second interesting thing is, uh, which we will not discuss here, is that the Megazone 23 Part 1 was hacked up into Robotech the movie. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. I've never seen that, though. Which, if you want to hear more on that, uh, recently, uh, Destroy All Podcasts DX, they did a whole episode about Robotech the movie, oh. and bless them for that, because there's a reason why they called it part of the Robotech trilogy of pain. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've, I've actually skimmed through the Robotech movie. I haven't seen it. It is so bad. First of all, it's this totally made-up story where, you know, um, the Robotech masters are trying to, like, you know, get the SDF-1 computer back, and they change the story so that it's on Earth, and they intersplice this Southern Cross footage, what? which just looks horrible because it's cheap. TV footage mixed in with the Megazone OAV. Wow. <laughs> they totally hacked up Megazone and like moved scenes around and you have like scenes from the beginning towards the end <laughs> and then they had this super fucky thing where um, they had this totally new crappy ending animated where Shogo's going after BD. Of course they have different names. I don't care what their names yeah. are. But, yeah. um, after the Garland gets trashed he has to go like rescue one of Yui's roommates who's being taken to like some airport to be flown away. <laughs> and like one of like the crappy like space fighters from Megazone mm-hmm. is the secret prototype. He steals it, and it transforms into a, a a hard gun robot. What? And he's like going and fighting BD, who actually has been like uh, cloned by the Robotech masters because they're trying to get the computer. And he's like a secret traitor. And it's like, oh my god, who ca- who came up with this crap? It's like they just took Megazone, sliced it to pieces, murdered it, and then <laughs> peed on its grave. <laughs> I mean, Robotech, you know, even with all the changes it made, the Macross part and the most paid part, at least, were pretty close to their original stories. Yeah. Right. Southern Cross made a lot of changes, but this show, they just totally raped it. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's sad, and it's it's a good thing that it's out of print and that, you know, nobody ever saw it anywhere, and, you know, I wish I had that time of my life back, even though I just skimmed <laughs> through it here and there. So, <laughs> let's move away Thank from goodness. that piece of crap and... Uh, yeah. What do you guys think of part two? Part two, basically, what a continuation. Um, what what is the time skip on that? Because six months. Six months. Is it, it six, six months? Six yeah. months. And it, I, I had to first figure out who was who because the art style was so bloody different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Between the two. Yeah, that's one of the things I didn't like that they totally changed the art style. Yeah, it became yeah. realistic and man, it, it, to to some levels, really really detailed in the um, in the old violence factor. But we'll get to that. But uh. I, I had to sit there and figure out one of the most amusing things about it is in the beginning when you see the Thundercats pinball machine and yeah. the Silverhawks pinball machine. I, I lost it. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was That's because um all three shows were animated by the same studio, so yeah. Yeah. it's just sort of an in joke. Yeah, I guess it was an in joke and to put that in there. I did find it funny going throwing back to the first episode, um, the first movie that uh Shogo worked at McDonalds <laughs> and proud too. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's a good start. Do you see D's, those commercials. Man. It was like, oh yeah, exactly. Calvin. He yeah. was he was pulling the Calvin. <laughs> but um, yeah. But the 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 second the second uh, the second part's good. Um, definitely you because the first part you, you're left wondering what's going to happen to these people because it's kind of an open ended uh, ending I would say in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, the art style was a little crazier. Uh, you see that they get uh, Shogo is actually a little bit more militant now. Yeah. Uh, since I guess he knows what's going on and the true intent of everything, so um, you get you get introduced to a whole cast of very colorful, literally colorful <laughs> characters. <laughs> So um, some of them look like Jim and the holograms too. <laughs> that was interesting. And the first half of that, the first half of that movie was a, a beer commercial. Yeah, I never thirsted for Heineken so much in my life. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it it, it was good. Um, the you get to go more into uh, kind of the conspiracy 
what's going on. I guess you find, I guess, what is it? The Megazone is actually on track now to go to Earth. Um, and the, what is it? The Eve program is just there. It controls everything up until it reaches Earth and then it's, you know, overtaken by Adam, mm -hmm. which I guess is yeah. judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to, you know, seeing if that Megazone is uh, um, worthy of being uh, landed on Earth. He certainly is. But uh, so that was kind of, that was kind of interesting. Uh, the violence factor. Oh my oh, gosh! Oh, the captain. Uh, I. <laughs> oh god, that captain with the freaking yeah, the freaking robot tentacles, and it's just like going through his eyeballs and his fingers, and oh, oh man, that was just his yeah. digits and his limbs were just rendered asunder. Yeah, I'm just watching. Oh. Oh, I mean, if you if you you get to watch this, and you can you can find that DVD probably at your late, at your at your local you know, video store, Best Buy, Circuit City, whatever. But um, it's all in the pack now. But you you watch that second episode of Megazone, and you see that scene where the where the ship is getting taken over by these these robotic tentacles, and it is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, as it's worse than Fist of the North Star, <laughs> in some levels. I I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> And yeah. somehow I was thrilled well, to watch. At least this was entertaining when it came to exploding heads. In between that and watching Cloverfield this weekend, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, definitely kind of interesting. Uh, I guess you get to see, the, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away at the ending there, but oh, you know, I guess uh, they get to the point where they got to get to Eve. They meet Eve, do what uh, you know, Shogo. And Yui, they do what they need to do, and right. somehow they're kind of chosen worthy to, just them though, to uh, land on Earth. But then the BS flag comes up with yes. all the people that were ex gunned down in the, uh, <laughs> gunned down in the streets. Or hey, what's up, guys? The entire, the <laughs> yeah, it's like we're not dead actually. <laughs> yeah, all these like biker punks, all these nasty biker punks that are there. Even though you saw us gunned down by tanks and about a, a regiment of uh, soldiers, we're we're cool, we're cool, yeah, and we made it to the escape pod. But um, we're all alive. Some of them blown up. Personally, I did not like part two anywhere near as much. No, um, no, it, it really didn't take the story anywhere. One of the things in part one and two is that they're fighting uh, these people called the Dissolg. Yeah. That are from another megazone, but has much more advanced technology. But we never get any insight as to who they are. We never yeah. get really to see why them. they're fighting. Yeah. We never even see them. They're practically aliens, even though you know that they're humans, just on a different ship. Yeah. Exactly. So that's just totally thrown out the window. The mech action, there's hardly any of it here. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Shogo goes and steals back the repaired garland he barely uses it then that other guy trash i think his yeah. name uses it and then it just gets wrecked so there's like hardly any mecha action going on and um it just really doesn't expound upon any of the things like no i guess they've made clear that they're living in a fake world oh. but you never see the reaction of the population like wouldn't you think this entire city would be an anarchy were they ever told i think they were the populace i think they were yeah they were told that's Whoa. why they were doing the um the recruiting drive yeah oh very true yeah they were recruiting because they said you know the we have enemies that we have to fight yeah that was true too um yeah because i mean you, you think of that if you found out your whole existence was fake you think yeah. there'd be blood in the streets but exactly everybody was cool in there the guy's name was lightning lightning that lightning sorry lightning was the uh, leader of trash trash was the motorcycle gang yeah. then you got this other thing of like shogo is just hanging out with these like super weird bikers who are just like the uh, the epitome of 80s bikers. Yeah. And his relationship with Yui also doesn't really... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just seems very different from in the first movie. It, it kind of goes backwards, I think. Because yeah. Yui's very independent in the first one. Yeah. She's like, you know, she, she, could, she could go on without him if she wanted to, at least in the beginning half of it, you know, before she becomes attached. But in this one, you know, she's just like, she's wounded. She's, you know, just kind of got the sadness behind her and... um she just doesn't seem the same at all. She looks different and seems different at the same time, yeah. which kind of threw me off. I mean, granted, she was Yui, but she didn't seem like the same person to me in the second one at all. There's also so few returning characters from part one, like, for example, um, yeah. that other roommate of... Mai. Mai. Yeah, yeah, Mai. She vanishes. You know, her dad is in part... Her dad is still in part two, but she's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Shogo's friends, like that old, that old pops who runs that motorcycle shop, 
he doesn't they don't show him exactly uh shogo's two friends who you know get patriotic and decide to sign up for the military you don't see them ever again oh nope. they're dead and <laughs> well they're dead oh yeah <laughs> i'm pretty That's sure they, they got tentacled or something but <laughs> no, no doubt but uh, it's like it seems so different and it drops so many in part one and yep. you know doesn't really follow up on any of the themes and it just yeah it just kind of is there. It's okay. I mean, I gave it a three out of five in my review, but that's you know, fair. Part one was so great, and mm-hmm. you know, part two just doesn't follow up. Maybe it's also doing because part one was directed by Noboru Ishiguro, who also directed the original Macross. Uh, he also directed the Fantastic Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Wow. A whole bunch of other stuff. So. And as well as Orgus, yeah. Orgus, and that, so, that, that's another show we have to review sometime in the future. I, I've been wanting to watch that for a while. Oh, definitely. So you know, he has that. He has he has a real affinity for, you know, these these mecha projects. So that might be also another difference since uh, you know it's a different director in part two. But yeah, it continues and ends it for that part. Yep. But I think it could have been so much better. Yeah, very yeah. true. You you're you're really left wanting more in that one. What about part three, though? I haven't watched part three, and I'm not sure if Neil has, but I have. What, what's a brief overview of part three, and just how, what were your impressions on it? Yeah. Um, well, overview, what is it? It's uh, it's a different Megazone. Well, it's it's it's, it's on Earth. Yeah, it's like a way in the yeah. future. This one's set on Earth. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's on Earth. Um, what is it? They're, Shoko is actually like a legend now, isn't he? Yeah, it's because it's been like 500 years since part two yeah basically um what you got is that 500 years have passed since uh part two and everybody lives in this city right. that's very tightly controlled by this computer system yep and um mm-hmm. there's this company called mm-hmm. ex corp mm. that manages the system yeah with ex so the story's about this guy named uh Eiji takanaka and uh, he's sort of this hacker guy and he ends up getting a job with um with ex even though he's a hacker so maybe he's sort of like a uh Oh shoot! What's this guy's name? Uh, big hacker turned security consultant. Yeah, I know who you're talking oh, about. Yeah, yeah. too. Just trying to remember oh his god, name. what is that guy's oh, name? Oh god, what is what is his name? He's, he's been on like screensavers and and mm-hmm. all these these tech shows. Oh, what is that guy's name? I don't remember it. Like five hours after we record this, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 you know he that dude. He, yeah, that guy. So you know, he, but now he's working for mm-hmm. the man. And there's all these weird things going on, and what he discovers is this video game called, and and I kid you guys not, it's called Hard On. Yep, Hard On. <laughs> In all caps. <laughs> and they talk about it like crazy. Yeah. I need to be the best at Hard On. Yeah, like, I am the best at Hard On. Yeah. Yeah, so um, anyway, mm-hmm. Hard On is actually sort of a training program for the uh, mass production garlands, because yep. they still have the good old garland even 500 years in the future. Mm-hmm. And um, there's this resistance group that's fighting um, against EX, and AG sort of meets this girl who's involved with the resistance group, and he's sort of like caught between the man. Oh, by the way, that hacker's name, Kevin Mitnick. Okay. That's his name? That's right. And he was off the, off the, off the top of my tongue. Kevin Mitnick, very famous hacker who uh, got arrested, went to jail, and is now a security consultant. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, you know, AG's drawn into this rebellion, and it goes out into this all-out rebellion against the system and the man. And, um, wow. you know, he finds out that uh, at the end that the Earth has been completely restored, but mm-hmm. the city is like this mechanical monster that is now encroaching on the earth and destroying nature and it keeps expanding and you see it's it's kind of nasty looking from the outside of the city yep. it's just this giant monster that keeps expanding whereas wow. on the inside of the city it's this bright utopia but it's pretty ugly from the outside Jeez. Mm-hmm. so it's sort of you know I guess it's like sort of a play on you know something can be beautiful on the outside but ugly on the inside, inside yep. this is sort of the backwards on the inside to those who don't know better it's beautiful but on the outside to nature wow. it's this horrible destructive force that's quite the contrast so uh, they take down they end up taking down the system and they do it by getting this data from Shogo's Garland which they find the ruins of the old Megazone 23 so, and Shogo's yep. beat up Garland Yep. And oh, wow. kind of the interesting thing is the head of the system is this this guy named Wan Dai. And, um, you know, he's all, like, hooked into the machine and yada yada. And uh, Eiji confronts him at the end. Yeah. 
And one of the things that people have been supposing over the years is that this guy, Wan Dai, based on the way he talks, but also by his Japanese voice actor, that Wan Dai is actually Shogo. Wow. How, how's that yeah, possible? I, yeah, I kind of got that feeling, too. You, because Shogo was... When Ag meets Eve, she makes him the new operator of 7G, which is what Shogo was called as well in, in the first two. Yeah. Um, she says that Shogo was supposed yeah. to do something, but he wasn't able to. And that's right. what she selected Ag to be mm-hmm. the new operator of 7G to do. Right. And the way that this guy, Wan Dai, talks like, oh, I've been hooked up to a machine for so long and I haven't seen anything with you know my real eyes. And yeah. just the way he talks, but also the fact that he has the same voice actor as Shogo from part two kind of leads me to believe that he is Shogo and that like somehow like he got, he started up this system to help people, but then sort of it took him over Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sort of like polluted and corrupted him. Goodness. Oh yeah. It's the, that typical, um, that typical argument when it comes to technology, you can't control it anymore and it overtakes you and yeah. Yeah. So. so one of the things that uh, sticks out about Part Three is it's a lot, mm-hmm. it's a lot more cyberpunk than uh, the first two. It's focused. There's a lot of focus on like computer hacking and not hacking like in the way of you know like that god awful hackers movie, but um, <laughs> a lot more focus on you know it, it feels kind of like. Um, Similar to like that that novel Neuromancer, if you've read that by William Gibson. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of focus on the computer world, and they detail into that, and uh, really not as much ultra violence as uh, you know, part one or two. Uh, no sex for Ag, so no. he doesn't get to score. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, but a lot of people really hate part three. Some of them even more than part two, and I I like part three. It's not as good as part one, but it's a good standalone story, and I definitely think it's way better than part two. Yeah, I would agree with you there, and I I, I like that. Um, instead of just doing like you know a few years later or anything like that, it was like five hundred years later, mm-hmm. and it, it just kind of showed that okay, the program happened. These people were put back on here, and then basically the same thing is happening again with the computer and taken over everything but yeah I, I would agree with you that it's probably it's much better than the second part it's still not as good as the first part but you know the first part is a must see for anybody and, well, then, um, and then if and then once you're done you got to see part two and part three <laughs> you'll definitely want more but uh don't be don't be too concerned you you might get disappointed so what's your overall rating for uh megazone 23 parts one i think uh, i think the first part i would give like a 4.5 mm-hmm. uh second part like a three uh the second uh, third part like a three and a half maybe three and 3.75 well wow. so and, and chris what's your what's what uh, well, what were your um your totals of on, on mahq actually uh pretty much the same as paul uh Part one, I gave a four. Oh, really? But part two, I let's see here, a three. Mm-hmm. And part three, I gave let's see here, right? A three and a half. Three nice. and a half. Yeah, well, I, I haven't seen part three, so I guess that'll be to be determined. But um, I my 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 um reviews of uh parts uh two one and two are the same as yours, four and then three, because um part two did fall off a little bit, I'd have to say. Quite a bit. Now, before we wrap this up, an uh, interesting note about the you know, future of the franchise. A few years ago, it was announced that they were going to make a uh, new OAV that was sort of supposed to be like an alternate sequel to Part 1 and kind of ignoring Part 2. But then it never happened. It never happened. And instead, there was a right. PS3 game that wow. came out last year called Blue Garland. Thank God. Which, from the sounds of it, <laughs> I think they might have just canceled the OAV and turned it into this to game. A game. Video game. Because the right. story is roughly that um, it's set 20 years after Part One. Wow. But it ignores Part Two, from what I understand. Oh, cool. And it stars this guy. Let me look up on Wiki. Right. Who is the son of Yui? Okay. And therefore also Shogo. Well, that's pretty cool. I I saw I saw it on um I saw a picture of the cover on Wikipedia. Hopefully it'll come out here, but I don't yeah. think so. I don't think so. I, I heard it was a pretty crappy game. Yeah. Oh. Well then, darn. So uh, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe it's for the best then. <laughs> 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 so uh, he ends up you know potting a garland as well, and there's all this other stuff, and it looks like from I'm looking at it on the wiki entry, looks like Eve's in it too. So. You know, it'd be nice if it came here, or if we at least got some sort of description of you know what the uh the story was but um i really would like it if if uh 
Megazone came back, I mean, we've seen a lot of old franchises, you know, having entries in the last few years. You know, there's a new, mm-hmm. you got Double O on, you know, there's a new Macross, yeah. uh, new Votomes. So there's a lot of life still left in these old franchises. So I think Kinda, yeah. Megazone would be ripe for a return. Maybe something like um, mm-hmm. like a sequel in between parts two and three that sort of picks up after part two and explains mm-hmm. more things about that and leads into part three more. Yeah, exactly. That would be good. So I think there's definitely uh, a lot that can still be done with this franchise, and uh, you know it's still got some life left into it. Any other final comments on the franchise? No, no. Uh, just I'm, my last thing would be is if you want something different and want something new, uh, something that'll make you think, uh, go ahead and uh, get part one and you know w- watch all the other ones. Or pick up the Mega Zone Twenty Three, uh, Mega Zone Two Three collection. Um, it's at Best Buy and other retailers from <laughs> ADV. Not to act like a commercial for it, but it's out there. And um, just wraps up the second segment on Gundam at MAHQ, and we'll be right back. Where's my froggy? Where's my froggy? Oh, I didn't see it want to come in. Well, look! Gun. Damn your eyes! Look for it! 